Got it. All right, so hi, um, I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I work for the Chattanooga Police Department. My name is Jennifer Baggett, and I was just telling Grant, I've been here um, with the city of Chattanooga as an employee of the city uh, for 15 years, and with specifically the Chattanooga Police Department going on seven years, and um, as a crime analyst, the last six years. Only this past July, so just a couple of months ago, um, did I get the role of intelligence analyst in our organized crime unit. So our organized crime unit consists of our narcotics and vice unit, our gun team, and our soon-to-be serious offender unit, which is our former gang unit. So basically, gangs, guns, and dope. And so I'm the only analyst for this entire unit. So I split my duties between narcotics, vice operations, uh, gun team, knife and leads, shots fired, violence, and then um, I'll also be managing our gang validation list and handling the gang validations once our new serious offender unit gets up and running this Friday. Um, okay, so that's enough about me. Um, when Grant and I were emailing back and forth about your class, he said that you guys are pretty much already working on your own project and that um, you guys are mainly focusing on how to interpret your data and to communicate your findings and your Excel, Microsoft Excel project. So a lot of what I'm about to talk about has to do with Excel, but I also wanna talk about law enforcement data as a whole and how we present our findings to essentially help catch the bad guys. Um, and I also wanna preface Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So I may think I'm fantastic at Excel. On my resume, I may put that I am an advanced level Excel expert. However, I only use a certain portion of Excel for my job that I do every single day. So because I've done it over and over and over again, I've gotten really good and really fast at the portion of Excel that I know. So um, a scientist, uh, an accountant, a tax professional, they may use a totally different part of Microsoft Excel than I do. And I may not know any of the tools or how to do what they do. And so it may look like, you know, I'm just a beginner. So, I, you know, level of expert of Microsoft Excel is subjective in my opinion. Um, I know my way around Excel and data just from what I do in my realm of my job. So, I am in no means an expert, and I hope I can teach you just a smidge of law enforcement data. And if you all are ever interested in getting into law enforcement to be an analyst, a researcher of that sort, um, I hope that you learn something. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. And when I was emailing back and forth with Grant, one of the things he said was, you know, oh, they're learning how to tell a story with data. And I loved that remark. So I titled my presentation, How to Tell a Story with Data, Extracting Data, Analyzing Data, and Communicating. Communicating your findings. So I'm going to, well, give me just a second. Uh, all right. So. If everyone can hear me and see everything, I'll get started. I'm going to go through this quickly because I know we only have an hour and I, as you can tell, I like to talk a lot. So I'm going to try to skim through it. And if you have questions, pop it up in the chat window and um, I will do my best. Or you could pop all your questions up and maybe Grant can mention them at the end or whatever. Okay. So Chattanooga Police Department's mission is to keep you, your family, and our community safe. This is the mission that is um, wrapped on their police vehicles. This is the mission that is ingrained in their head right out of the academy. Chattanooga Police Department's vision is to be respected and trusted by all segments of Chattanooga's diverse community. And their values are responsiveness, ethical conduct, selfless service, progressiveness, equality, community, and trust. This is important. The reason why I wanted to show you this, because every product I put out, um, I keep our department's mission, vision, and values in mind when putting out a product. And, and you'll see what I mean here in a few minutes, but uh, that way I am also in line with our police department. And I also feel like I'm part of the team, the overall team. And 
I work with the overall mission of the Chattanooga Police Department. So it's very important, even though I'm not sworn, I'm a civilian, that I stay in line with that and I feel like I'm part of a team. Okay, so I get questions all the time. So if you're not a cop, but you work around cops all day, what is your role? What do you do? So just like I said, all of my products are created and designed with my agency's mission, vision, and values in mind. So I also offer support to law enforcement, but analysts, crime analysts here, we do not want to be cops, um, but we do want to be another tool in a cop's duty belt. So they've got their taser, they've got their handcuffs, and they also have Jennifer Baggett, their crime analyst's cell phone number, they got my card because when they need data, when they have a request, they're going to contact me. So I want to be another tool to ultimately help catch the bad guys. All right. So we are all on the same team. We want to catch the bad guys. And also, most importantly, when you are communicating your findings, and this means for any product, anything ad hoc, anything you tell the chief, anything you tell the mayor, uh, know your audience. And that's extremely important. The way I convey a product for our chief is going to sound different than the way I would convey that same product at lineup in front of, you know, officers that have only been out of the academy for a year. And it's not saying that you're dumbing it down per se. What you're doing is you're knowing your audience those officers that have been on the street for only a year, they may not have been privy in their prior, you know, careers and jobs in life to data. They may not know the lingo and the language and what data looks like, like a chief would. So know your audience and step it up or step it down, depending on your audience. All right. And I don't know if you know this or not. I don't know if you've been taught this in any of your classes um, with criminology or whatnot, but there are five types of crime analysis. I'm going to run through them really quick. I don't want to bore you. All of them involve qualitative or quantitative data. So there's administrative, strategic, tactical, intelligence, and investigative types of crime analysis. Now I'm going to show you sample products uh, built in Microsoft Excel that have helped me tell a story with my data based on these different types of crime analysis. So in administrative analysis, uh, this type of analysis is usually um, performed by a, like a senior analyst or a supervisor. Um, they report on a variety of crime. They fulfill data requests for the big dogs. So city council, the media, uh, chiefs, mayors, they pull numbers and maintain these for year-to-year -year comparisons, and these numbers get reported to the FBI, the TBI, because I'm in Tennessee, the Census Bureau. They get used for budgeting purposes. Um, these are long-term just numbers, and the data is usually, usually extracted using certain queries and functions in the police department's record management system software. And record management system software is just the software where we house all of the police reports. So this chart right here, this was created in Excel. Um, and this is where the majority of the really nerdy stuff gets used. So standard deviations, z-scores, thresholds, percent changes, averages, blah, gross. <laughs> this, if you can't already tell, is my weakness. This is the stuff that it took me a long time to get good at. And I don't even want to say good at it. That's just being nice. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not very good at it. And thank goodness Excel has formulas to basically do all of these things for me. But so uh, this is just a sample of it looks like property crimes citywide in December of 2020. It's just showing month to month and year to year, year to date comparisons and percent changes. So that's how Excel tells a story uh, using a graph and using a chart. So this would be something that would be sent to our higher ups, like our lieutenants, our captains and our chiefs. And strategic analysis. So strategic analysis can be performed by regular crime analysts. It doesn't have to be a senior analyst or a supervisor, but what they do is they look at long-term problems um, over a long period and they're hoping for a longer term solution. So for example, we may have a captain come to us and say, hey, man, over like the last year, our auto thefts have just remained high. They just won't go down. Can you perform a long-term strategic analysis so we can devise a plan 
to start getting our auto thefts going down over the course of the next year. So this does not require reading any police reports. This is just strictly extracting numbers and you're looking at the overall trend line. So this dashboard was built in Excel and I know you all know what a dashboard is. Um, I've seen some samples of uh, things that you all are doing and, uh, and actually I'm not even that good at Excel dashboards because I had to switch to Google Suite because the city uses Google Suite. So I've built dashboards in Google Sheets more than I have in Excel, but this is one of my samples. Um, this is a 52 week dashboard. So this is one year long and it, there's a week at the bottom on the X axis um, for every week of the year. And this is just strictly numbers. So as an analyst, I would say, hmm, why is there 19 way up here and two way down here because that jumps out at me. So I would say 19, huh? Oh, so December 9th through December 15th. Oh, I bet that is when the kids have just gotten out of school for Christmas break. Uh, and we know based on experience that crime tends to always rise when kids are out of school. Uh, so that might be one explanation. If I look down at the two, like, oh, there's only two. So December 30th through New Year's. Um, that might be right after New Year's, right after the holidays when the kids have gone back to school. So maybe crime has dipped down. Anyway, so uh, this is what I would do for strategic analysis. I would look at the long-term trend and then you, our chain of command would devise a plan, a slow plan to get those numbers to go down say it was for auto theft. Uh, this one isn't, this is burglary, but um, you get the gist. And then tactical analysis. So tactical analysis is the exact opposite. Let me see if I could, oh, shoot. Ah, sorry, I'm seeing the, um, Grant, is there a way to get the top toolbar off? I'm not, I can't see, I'm gonna. I'm Unfortunately, gonna that's the one downside of Zoom. You can move it. Can I move? But it? You should, yeah, you can drag and click it, but it's one of those that it's always there. Oh, that's good. That's way better. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Um, okay. So tactical analysis is the exact opposite of strategic. So you're looking at short-term data, um, usually only about two weeks to a month. It's very short-term. You're focusing on a short-term problem, and most of the time you're only getting a short-term solution. So um, this type of data is not looking at numbers. This type of data, you're actually reading police reports and 911 calls. And this spreadsheet was also built in Excel. And this is, was my job for six years as a tactical crime analyst. I would maintain a spreadsheet that looked like this um, for different types of part one crime for my sector that I was responsible for. I was responsible for what we call Baker sector in the city of Chattanooga. I was also the violent crime analyst. So it just so happened that Baker sector at the time was also our most violent area of the city. So I was violent crime analyst plus Baker sector analyst. So for Baker sector, this looks like this was uh, burglaries. So I would maintain a spreadsheet like this. And every day I would pull in new data of in Baker sector, the burglaries from the day before. And I would pull them in here and I would analyze them. Do I see any trends? Do I see any patterns? What's going on? Is there any similar MOs amongst all of the uh, incident reports? So um, that was my bread and butter. That's Microsoft Excel was what I used every single day and I still do to this day. But um, the reason why I have Annie Mitchell down here, I don't know if you know who Annie Mitchell is. Annie Mitchell is basically one of the founders of crime analysis from the late 70s. She is the crime analysis unit supervisor uh, for Los Angeles Sheriff County, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office. Um, and she is awesome. She's also the vice president for the IACA, which is International Association of Crime Analysts. She's like my idol, so I love her. Um, but in one of her presentations, something that she said really stuck with me, and this was years ago, and it has still stuck with me to this day. She said, no analyst, should try to do other types of analysis until they've mastered tactical analysis. Why do you think that is? Because tactical analysis, it's like baby steps. You're, you're analyzing little bits of data 
and you you practice over and over and over again and analyze over and over and over again until you get really good at it. And then once you get really good at it, you can analyze bigger and bigger and more complex types of analysis. And then pretty soon your products are getting bigger as well. So tac tactical analysis should be every crime analyst, bread and butter. I don't care what anybody says. Don't start with strategic. Don't start with administrative. Start with tactical analysis. You won't regret it. Once you learn that, you can do all the other things. And that's what I've done. So anyway, an, ex an example of tactical analysis is the Jeffrey Allison story. So I was analyzing burglaries and all of a sudden um, I kept seeing these shed burglaries. So just backyard sheds in people's backyards where they have like a little storage shed where they keep their tools or lawnmower. They kept getting burglarized in the same area of town. So I took all of them from my Excel spreadsheet. I put them together in a bulletin, an informational bulletin. But before I sent it out to patrol, I went to our burglary unit and I said, hey, does the works of this criminal, does it sound familiar? Do you know who it is? And one of the investigators was like, oh yeah, that's Jeffrey Allison. I can tell you that. So I put that on my bulletin, sent the bulletin out to all the patrol officers in that area of town. Lo and behold, Jeffrey Allison was caught. So the reason why this is tactical analysis is because the data that I pulled was only about a month long. He had only been doing this, breaking into sheds for about a month. Um, he did go to jail. So yay, the short-term problem is solved, but also it was a short-term solution because like two days later, he got back out of jail. So that's tactical analysis. But for a moment in time, those patrol officers, they caught the bad guy and they didn't have that problem for a little while, like a week. And then he got back out and he continued, but he kind of moved to a different part of town. But so that's tactical analysis in a nutshell. Um, and this is what bulletins look like. So to tell your story, you've got a spreadsheet like this, and then I make it into something pretty like this. So um, within tactical analysis, the analyst is able to formulate direction to patrol and investigations by creating these informational bulletins. Um, we also pull data for short-term initiatives and projects. Um, we do patrol sector inquiry. So my sector, I told you, was Baker sector. Somebody in Baker may contact me and say, hey, uh, I keep seeing these um, marble vandalisms. They're, you know, they're, I keep, uh, these businesses keep getting hit with marbles. Like people are driving by using slingshots and hitting marbles. Can you pull all marble reports for the last, you know, two months and put together something for me? So that's patrol sector inquiries, community member requests, citizen requests. That's basically the life of a tactical analyst. All right, so the next type of crime analysis is intelligence analysis. That's what I do now. So I went from basically the crimes to now focusing on the criminal. Uh, cr intelligence analysis studies networks of criminals and their crimes. Data is obtained through police reports, but also intelligence products, social media, field interviews, criminal informants, all software that holds identity info, such as people, vehicles, identifying factors, such as date of birth and addresses and social security numbers, jail records, jail phone calls. Um, usually, intelligence analysis is involved with organized crime, gangs, prostitutes, drugs, or like I told you earlier, what we like to call GGD, guns, gangs, and dope. Um, the spreadsheet at the bottom of this slide, this is an example of our NIBIN data. So NIBIN stands for National Integrated Ballistic Information Network. Essentially, it is a center in Huntsville, Alabama that is maintained by the ATF. And what they do is they put shell casings into this uh, machine, and then they can tell what shell casings are also linked to the same gun where shell casings were found at a different incident. So it's basically linking shell casings to the gun, to the place, to the person. So that's what I do now. So the bottom, you can see a NIBIN lead saying, hey, all these shell casings are, um, are connected. That's maintained in Microsoft Excel, but then I tell my story with this chart. I interpret the data by, the, by this chart. So this is what I do now as an intelligence analyst for our organized crime unit. Well, this is one of my jobs. Um, 
I, I do all the Niven leads and all the Niven charts. Um, and then the, oh, and here's another example of an intelligence product. So this will be put out um, basically like a situational awareness report, just saying, hey, you know, like this one specifically is talking about a block on Grove Street, how there's been a lot of violence. Um, these are the same guys or gang members that have been, you know, running around on this block. Um, but this is an intelligence product. You can see it kind of looks different than the tactical analysis bulletin that I put out. Um, so intelligence analysts, by the way, my role, they can be sworn or civilian. I've seen agencies have um, civilian intelligence analysts like me and then have also um, police officers that are intelligence analysts as well. All right. And so the final types of crime analysis is investigative analysis, also more commonly known as criminal profiling, like you've seen on the shows Criminal Minds and Mindhunters, if you've seen those TV shows. So investigative analysts or criminal profilers, they study the profiles and psychology of a criminal and their crimes to help better understand future criminals and their crimes that are similar, that are comparable. So the nature of the criminal's crimes can reveal key elements about their personality, which can ultimately help catch them. So the most famous case is Ted Bundy. So these profilers, um, they analyzed his style of killing um, his methods and his known movements, so agents were ultimately able to capture him. Now, the bad part about criminal profiling is you really can't create a criminal profile until one, the criminal's already caught in jail, and then you start analyzing them, or you're analyzing all of his patterns and crimes because he hasn't been caught yet, so he keeps committing all these crimes. So, um, like Ted Bundy, obviously, he's from the 70s. I don't think they had Microsoft Excel around in the 70s. Did they, Grant? I'm pretty sure they did not. <laughs> no. um, so even though they didn't have Microsoft Excel, I can bet you money that all of the agents that were working on all these cases all over the United States trying to find this guy, I mean, essentially, this, this really creeper, um, I bet you they wrote it all out. They wrote out or they put on charts and they put things on the walls in their, you know, police departments, you know, the times, the locations, the addresses, uh, similar MOs, the suspect description, vehicle description. They wrote it all out just like what we do in Microsoft Excel right now. So they're still using the same principle of Excel. They're using something to house all their data, to look at it, to analyze it so they can communicate their findings, and then tell a story about what they find. Um, what's next? Okay, so back to tactical analysis. By mastering tactical analysis first, I was able to get really good at analyzing crime. And by getting really good at analyzing crime, I was able to help put some pretty crappy bad guys away and then get good at other types of crime analysis. Now, uh, yeah, so the next part of this it's going to look and sound really egotistical, but I don't want you to look at it that way. And that's not my intention. So just roll with it because uh, there's a method to my madness. Okay, so when I first started in the crime analysis unit, I, I was four months in. I was a baby crime analyst. I was just learning how to analyze crime. Um, and when I was analyzing this crime, I saw that we kept having these robberies, they were pizza delivery guys. So pizza delivery guy would get um, a pizza order. Um, they would deliver their pizza out to this address that was on the order. The, the address would be like a dilapidated, uh, condemned house. There would be guys standing on the porch waiting for the pizza. So when the pizza delivery guy came up to the porch, uh, the guys on the porch would put them at gunpoint, rob them of their little envelope of cash, and also still take the pizza, and then send the pizza delivery guy on their way. So, and they didn't even live at this, you know, condemned house. They, you know, they were just using that as an address because it was kind of desolate. So I put together this really, <laughs> look at this bulletin. It's, whew, it's hurting. It's, it's looking rough. But that was like my very first bulletin I ever put out. Um, and so I, my coworker was like, yes, you have to send that out. And I was so nervous because 
during this four and a month that I had just become a crime analyst, I was just practicing and learning how to analyze crime. So I got the approval from my supervisor and I put this out. And um, so the patrol officers actually read my products. And once they read my products, um, they caught the guy. And it was actually two of them. And they caught the bad guy because of my product. So our chiefs of police, they have these really heavy round coins. And they're called chief's coins. Um, they're like little accolades. They don't give them out often. They only give them out when you do something really, really good. You help the community. You help catch a bad guy. Um, they're not given out all the time or else they wouldn't have meaning, right? So, um, so like I said right here, uh, I was a baby analyst. I was four months in. And after I sent this out and they helped catch the bad guys, um, I was given a chief's coin. And that super, you know, being new in the field and that boosts your morale and that makes you want to keep going. And now you're like, oh, now I got skin in the game. I can help catch bad guys and um, I can tell stories with data. So uh, same thing. I got another Chiefs coin in 2018 because my data and my product helped catch Thomas Wooten, who was a sexual predator and an exhibitionist. Um, essentially, he was... Um, showing children uh, his private parts and that really upset me. So I worked really hard on that one and he was in the news, he got caught. Um, it, was, it was a good day when they caught him, but I was given a chief's coin, there it is. I was being presented with this and it was totally unexpected. Um, and then in 2020, I also received a chief coin while I was working from home. Uh, during COVID, I got a chief's coin mailed to my house from the actual chief um, because I created the first interactive dashboard using only Google Sheets that's shareable with all of the police departments so they can see all the shots fired calls in real time. Um, now, listen, when I say none of this stuff's that big of a deal, like creating the Google Sheet, that's not very, you know, that's not a big deal. People can create dashboards. It's not hard, but it just hadn't been done before. So it's a big deal to the people that needed it that didn't even know they needed it, you know. And then in that same year in 2020, um, I was nominated by my peers for a City of Chattanooga Employee Excellent Award, and I won. So I got that. Now, um, the reason why I tell you this is not to to brag or to be egotistical, um, buy-in from your unit or whoever you're relaying your data to is everything. It is huge. It's all that matters. It is the only thing that matters. Had I been making a lot of mistakes, putting out the wrong information, putting out crappy looking products, um, I wouldn't be credible or like my, my, my credible my, my credible number, like say I have a 10, my credible number would be like a two and nobody would come to me and nobody would come to me for reports or ask me of data or they'd be like, oh goodness, I got to go ask her and I know it's going to be, you know, a nightmare to get data. Had that gone that way and had I been that type of person and I wasn't really particular with my data and the way I presented it, um, I wouldn't have had buy-in from the, the chiefs, from the police officers, from anyone I was giving my product to. So being credible and being reliable with your data is everything. Like I can't stress that enough. If you learn one thing here, um, it is to be reliable with your data, create yourself a very good reputation of being very detail oriented, extremely methodical, uh, and extremely reliable and a hard worker with your data. Because if you're in this in this type of business to get accolades, you're in it for the wrong reason and you'll be found out quick. But when you're doing your job correctly with data, the accolades just organically will happen and you don't even want them to happen. Like I would much prefer to be the nerd behind the computer all day long, but these things just start happening when you start doing really good work um, regarding data and regarding telling your story, telling a story, helping catching bad guys with data. So that is why I want to show you how important it is to build your credibility. And I'm going to say this as a side note, I have worked with crime analysts and I've been 
in the same room with other analysts um, where that has not always been the case. So take it very seriously. Take it very, very close to heart. Now, that's not to say that you can't make a mistake. You will. That's part of life. Uh, but it should definitely be the exception, not the rule, you know? All right. So here's some more uh, tactical analysis products. These are just bulletins. So um, I'll just let you sit with this for a second so you can really kind of look at it. I included a map in this one, pictures of the storefront. Um, I made it super easy to read, you know, and I kept it one page. I, you don't, you know, people don't like to read. The people that like to read are you and me, you and I. We like to read because we're nerds and we like to read data. Um, the people you're giving these products to likely don't like to read. So keep it short, simple, and to the point. Um, here's more. Here's more. Um, so this. Part of my job, I also uh, maintain all of our drug overdoses in the city of Chattanooga. And this is 2020, and there were 575 overdoses just that I found in our records management system and our 911 calls. This is not data including um, like EMS calls where the person doesn't even call the police. They just go straight to the hospital. I don't have access to that data. So there are likely double the amount of overdoses in Chattanooga but these are the ones with police reports. So this is in Google Sheets, but we know it's the same principle as Microsoft Excel, right? So that's a lot of data. And you're like, what? What do I do with all this? I don't understand. But you all are smart and you know you're gonna pivot table and you're gonna analyze it. I was given a task by our chief of police. He wanted to know, one, where are the overdoses happening? Two, why is there such a huge increase in overdoses? Three, um, he wanted to see all the latest data regarding fentanyl because fentanyl is the drug of choice for the people that are overdosing in Chattanooga. So I took all this data and I created this ginormous 14 page report. So that data, that spreadsheet can turn in, that, that, that's what this turned into. So I took the spreadsheet and I made it pretty and I made it re readable and I interpreted it and I broke it down as best as I could to where there's nothing, there's no stone left unturned. And I'll go through this. So there's all 13, 12, 13, 14 pages. On a side note, um, this, this right here, I did my own risk terrain modeling analysis using, uh, I think this was Google Maps and Snagit software just to create some arrows. I did my own risk terrain analysis based on these overdoses. And then later I was awarded, um, a f not free, our agency paid for it, but it was a year long um, subscription to Joel Kaplan's risk terrain modeling software. And if you don't know Joel Kaplan, Joel Kaplan, he's out of Rutgers University and he created this software, RTMDX, called risk terrain modeling. It's place-based risks. Um, and it's basically showing where you can put your police officers in certain spots, uh, that will help catch crime or reduce crime and help catch criminals. So I did my own little uh, risk terrain modeling. And then when I was awarded the software, I reran the same data and it actually confirmed what I already did by hand. So that was really cool. Um, so tactical analysis still doesn't even have to be a tiny bulletin. It can turn into this. All right, so the role of a crime analyst, what are you looking for when reading data and what helps you create an actionable product? Um, my motto is I will never ever send something out ever if it's not actionable. I don't wanna put something out for informational purposes only, as great as that sounds and as wonderful as that could be to have, these officers need to catch bad guys. So if it's not actionable, I kinda, I don't, put it out. It's rare that I would do that ever. So um, our main job is to find and identify series, patterns, trends, and hot spots. And you can do that with Microsoft Excel. You can do that with maps. I always intertwine my data with maps so I can see where they're happening and then I can read where they're happening. So it's visual uh, on both ends. And to do that, I always include the who, what, when, where, why, how, and then I also put some extras that don't fit into any of that category, like 
if there was um, a ring camera nearby a neighbor, um, if there was, uh, if this same bank has been robbed three different times, I would include those types of things. Um, we also research and analyze long-term problems. We provide information on a regular schedule or on demand ad hoc. So I call them my morning chores. So every day when I come into my office, I do my morning chores. So um, that's my shots fired, my overdoses, my gang validations. And then I will randomly get a call. Hey, can you look up blah, blah and tell me who lives at blah, blah. So that's on, that's on demand. That's ad hoc. So then I'll switch gears and I'll go to that. Um, and it, this little blurb right here, I'll, I'm talking about what a typical day would look like. So it's not uncommon to have a day of analyzing theft from motor vehicle calls involving keys left in the car. And then right when you're finished with that, you go straight to working on a three-year average of shots fired calls involving property damage as a result of a bullet. Uh, then you go straight into doing a citizen request for someone wanting to know how many crimes occurred at a certain address because their daughter is moving to the Chattanooga area and wants to go to UTC. So my whole job is, you know, very uh, multitasking and uh, detail oriented for sure. Um, and we assist with data management solutions. So not only are we like looking at the data and analyzing and making our data pretty and doing the fun stuff, we also have to deal with software. So I may tell my boss, hey, I need this because it will help me do this, this, and this part of my job better. Or, oh my gosh, uh, this is wrong. We need to go tell records so they can fix it in the system, this police report. Like we're all, we're, I'm constantly, you know, it's like putting out fires with software. All right, data collection. This is where you guys come in when um, you're learning about collecting data and where to get your data. So you can get data anywhere, literally anywhere, especially today, especially in 2021, from the internet, from social media, from the news, from personal observation, from Google, from open source intelligence uh, software and programs, police reports, um, CAD calls, which are police calls government official software and databases and other agencies help data and their products. Data is everywhere. Everything is data. Everywhere you walk, everything you look at, that's data. Um, but the most common forms of collecting the data and those methods and processes are R, Python, SSMS, which stands for SQL Server Management Studio, and Microsoft Access. So most all data collectors, accountants, scientists, researchers, and analysts, they use query and program writing software to extract their data. Um, most data collectors use Microsoft Excel, Access, or Google Sheets to store and maintain their data. But why? Because hand jamming sucks. You should not ever, ever have to hand type all of your data. Um, work smarter, not harder. It saves you time and it saves you carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, with a little bit of time and effort, you can learn a little bit, and it doesn't even have to be a lot, a little bit of programming. Um, so you can write your own queries later and that will extract the data for you out of most software. Like here, where I work, um, I use SQL Server Management Studio. I'm an SSMS girl through and through. Um, and I write my own queries because it gives me access to the back end of our records management system and will pull any data that I need. Um, you just got to know the programming language to input so you'll get the correct results that you're wanting. Um, I want to talk about some challenges of being a crime analyst and tips on how to be a great crime analyst. So, one thing I always, when I train new analysts, I always tell them data, as long as a human is involved with creating it. So in my case, a police officer is the one that initially writes a police report. I'm eventually going to query his police report and input that data into Microsoft Excel. So he's the creator of the data, not me. I just analyze it. I don't create that data. He's the creator. So as long as a human is involved, it will never ever be perfect. Uh, you could go ahead and always assume there's about a 10% margin of error. Um, maybe not always, maybe a particular, you know, section of data you're looking at is perfect. Maybe everything is exactly how it should be. But in general, overall, especially with administrative analysis, when those types of analysts are 
um, looking at big numbers, some of those numbers might be wrong, but the overall consensus is that 90% of it's gonna be correct. Um, and you will make mistakes, like I talked about earlier with you, but always try to fix the error and communicate the error. Therefore, always double and triple check every product before you send it out. Because like I told you, credibility and buy-in are everything in crime analysis. You know how like, you know, I, people say fake news and people don't know what to believe regarding their health because one source says this and one source says that. That's data overload and that's, that's hard to believe or buy in on one article because there's going to be another conflicting article. So that's why credibility and buy-in are everything. Um, just like for you, you will always want to make sure you have a peer-reviewed good scientific source um, and never underestimate the power of the good old Google, but always correctly cite your sources and make sure they're reliable. Read as many crime analysis books, attend as many crime analysis webinars and conferences, and learn from other crime analysts as much as you can. Um, everything I've learned, I learned from my mentor. Um, yeah, and I've been to a million conferences and reading books. Like, that's how I learn. Um, I don't have a degree in this. Uh, side note, I graduated from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, and I thought I was going to be a famous radio DJ. And um, clearly that did not happen. So uh, I don't have a background in this. So it was really imperative that I spend extra time taking in and learning as much as I can. Um, challenges of being a crime analyst and tips on how to be a great analyst continued. Um, make your data pretty. So I was once in a class where the instructor said, you don't have to make all your data pretty. You can literally um, put your bulletin on a paper napkin if you're at a restaurant and you got some good intel, put it on a paper napkin, push it out to patrol, and it'll do its job. And he is 100% correct. Um, it doesn't matter what your data looks like when you're in a crunch. When you need to just push something out, absolutely, it's more important to get the information out than make it pretty. But when you do have the time, really, really try to put together a good product because aesthetics count. It shows, one, that you know your software. Like, you can tell, you remember my first bulletin about the pizza delivery? You could tell I did not know what I was doing. <laughs> um, you can tell when someone knows their software and when they don't. And then it also shows that you care enough to con convey the product in a way that's easy on the eyes for the end user, and it's easy to read and understand. So you respected them, in a, you respected them enough to put together something um, that they can understand. Start presenting and practicing public speaking now if you do want to get into the data field uh, or crime analysis field because you will ultimately have to do uh, like present and present your findings. Uh, there were several times when I was in the crime analysis unit that I had to, they would say, hey, can you come to this chief's meeting at one o'clock and it's 1215. So, of course, then my heart would drop and I would be all nervous and I would have to present something and I wasn't prepared or, you know, I had to fly by the pants, you know, like it, start now just practicing uh, communicating your findings. So you can use all the fancy stuff in the world and all the fancy software. And trust me, it makes life so much easier. I have all the fancy software. It's wonderful, but never, ever like forget the basics because my mentor, his name was Bruce, and he's the best analyst I know. He, um, he taught me that sometimes fancy ain't everything. He always told me he could, he could create from scratch a crime analysis unit if he had Microsoft Excel, if he had a free mapping program like Google Maps or even like Q, which stands for Quantum Maps. It's an open source mapping program, uh, which is, it was free. And um, as long as he could get access into your data, then you could create a crime analysis unit. You don't need all the fancy software. You need Excel to put your data. You need a mapping program to map your work and you need access to the data. So in my case, I would be able to have SQL Server Management Studio that could help me write queries to get the data. Um, that's all you need to be successful. And even though I don't have a background in this field at all, um, I went on to get my master's degree in business and all you really need, 
really, when it comes down to it, is to be able to critically think. So yes, having a degree in criminology, criminal justice, going further, getting a master's in it, that's all wonderful. And that's going to get you a great job. And you're going to be well respected for that. But just remember, um, you don't want to have all the certificates in the world if you can't analyze crime, if that's your job. So you have to know how to critically think. So don't forget about the very basics. Um, and last, take breaks. We are nerds. We like to read. We look at spreadsheets all day. I look at spreadsheets all day. So from a health standpoint, there's nothing better and also nothing worse than staring at spreadsheets at a computer all day because we love to do it, but it's also bad for your health. So take your breaks. They're vital to helping you and your team and helping police. When you take breaks, you're better for it. Um, me and my team, we would just randomly in the middle of the day go to escape rooms because we couldn't look at spreadsheets anymore. Um, we would also go play <laughs> ping pong in our squad room. There I am, badass faggot. That was me. So um, what else? And finally, so the shorter but most detailed, the better, but always explain your data. Never, ever, ever assume others know what you're talking about. So that goes back to what I said in the beginning about um, like know your audience. So when I was still a baby analyst, maybe a year in, I was, I was like a toddler analyst by then. Um, I would create these really fun, and, and this is in Microsoft Excel, these cool time of day and day of week uh, temporal charts. This one particularly is for robbery. And, you know, common sense to me tells me, ooh, I should look at the red. The red is important. So I put this in a bulletin one time or in a report. I don't remember. And I had like two different people come to me and they're like, hey, what is this? Or like, uh, I mean, this is really cool. It looks like Picasso, but what do I do with this? Or what is, how do I, what does this mean? So it was right then and there that I was like, oh. So it doesn't mean the other, the end user stupid. It's just, you know your data best. So make sure you never assume that they would just know. I never assume that someone would just know my data because I know my data the best. No one else does. So it was after that that I started interpreting the charts. So I would put the chart in for cool looks and to like show that I was really cool. And then I would actually interpret it. And that they love that. Once they could like, like, oh, okay, yeah. So the red means, oh yeah. So Fridays and Saturdays, yeah. And I even said from left to right in the chart, you know, read this way. Um, so that's just an example, but never ever assume that others know what you're talking about. Just break it down. Be simple, short, quick, to the point, but explain it. And another side note, um, a, uh, a small example, when I thought I was going to be a famous radio DJ, um, between uh, commercial breaks and songs, I was able to talk. And I had about like 20 seconds. So I would write out all these note cards of things I wanted to say. And of course, it's so long. And I was, I was still a new DJ, so I was nervous. So I couldn't just like off the top of my head start, <laughs> you know, being a DJ. I had to write it all out. But then I had to like take out most of it because I only had 20 seconds. So it got me really good at being able to summarize and to ad lib and get the point across of what I wanted to say in a very short amount of time. So that has also helped me in my analysis job is to be able to be short, concise, to the point, but also make sure there's no questions that would be asked or no rock unturned. And also get a mentor now. If you're still in college, get a mentor now. Intern for free or look for paid internships. Um, or do ride-alongs. If you want to do police department work, um, do ride-alongs. They're free. Um, I think right here there's a... Oh, yeah. So there's me and my ride-along. I did ride-alongs all the time because looking at a map and looking at spreadsheets... Does, it's only one part of the picture when I was trying to understand where Baker Sector was. Like I can look at the map all day long and know all the streets in Baker Sector, but going out there in real life, that's a whole different ballgame. So, um, and what else? And my recommendation, crime analysis resources. If you're interested in crime analysis, look up IACA, the International Association of Crime Analysts. TALIA, the Tennessee Association of Law Enforcement Analysts, that's here in Tennessee. Annie Mitchell, I mentioned her earlier. Just Google her and you'll find her. She's great. Uh, Jerry Ratcliffe, he's the famous, uh, well, he's an 
academia uh, and professor and public speaker. And he, he did the famous uh, foot patrol experiment in Philadelphia. Um, ArcGIS Pro, it's the only software I use for mapping. Microsoft Suite, learn all of Microsoft Suite. Don't just learn Excel, start learning all of it. Google Suite, same thing. Um, and network, network, network. I can't stress it enough. And here's my contact info. If you guys ever have any questions, want to email me, if you want help with your resume, anything, here I am. Um, questions? Sorry, Grant, that was so long. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it was great. Yeah, no, no reason to apologize for that. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> all right. Are there any questions from the students? You can type it or just unmute yourself. Cool. I'm glad everyone loved that. <laughs> no, it was, it, was, it was actually really good. Uh, it connected a lot of what we've discussed over the past, what, 13 weeks? And seeing yep. someone uh, from a practicality standpoint, it's used in practice. So it's just not the academic side of things and taking a class. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's real life. Yeah. Cool. We have one That's student that. question. And well, anyone do a ride along? Yes, anyone can do a ride along. Anyone from the community? Anyone? Um, you have to, I guess your local police department or if you're in Chattanooga, um, you just contact the police department. Um, and if you want to reach out to me, I'll actually send you to the people that you would need to. But yes, you just fill out a form, basically, you know, like signing your life. And then um, you ride along for the shift. You can choose any shift too. You can do day shift, midnight shift. You can do the whole shift, all 10 hours, or you can do like two hours and be like, I'm good. Um, yeah, it's, Ride-alongs are super fun, super informative, and it's a whole different side of seeing police than what you see on TV and hear on the news, and especially in the climate today, versus really seeing what they have to do and deal with and the people and the things they have to deal with. Um, and thank you, Katie Ratcliffe. Thank you. And Harper West. <laughs> Anyone else? I'm not going to keep, especially you, Jennifer, too long, because I know it's 4.30 here, so. Yes. good. If there are any questions, she has her contact information. I have it as well. And Jennifer, I'll actually also follow up with you. I've done some opioid stuff with RTM, with a yes. grad student in Birmingham. Uh, just it's made me think favorite. over you. It is my favorite Jill. part of my job. Cool. I've, I've found my passion with overdoses. It's legit. We're now doing it in, uh, Ohio. So we just chatted about it yesterday. So he's doing rural to urban comparisons in four different counties. Well, um, if you need any data, I've got all the data in the world. Like I've got everything. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking is I'll reach out with the price up and checks. I think there's a ton of overlap in terms of mm -hmm. even what we've done analytically across both of them. Uh, but there's a lot of potential there. Oh yeah. Cool. Yes. And I really loved his software. It really just, instead of me, you know, kind of doing it chicken scratch like I did, having his software was something more like quantifiable to show like for court purposes or um, for anything to present to the mayor to show, now this is real, this is done for, with real software instead of just my guesses, you know, and like- It's a nice validation, being, yeah. Right, I loved it. I was like, oh, well, good. It, it was good on both ends. It helped his software like know that he, it's in the right realm and it helped yeah. me know, oh, then I interpreted the data correctly. Yeah. So. No, yeah, that's great. And that's, and it's nice to hear it that way too. If you did it, then it's almost verified through much more of a statistical approach, which yes. is power to you. You're on the right yeah. track. <laughs> And it did. It, it, it pops out all the like the statistics and the um, I don't even remember because it, it has been like a year ago, but I loved it. I was like, "Ooh, I need to do more. They were wanting to do use his software for. Um, for our shootings, but not use just a year. They were wanting to use bigger, uh, like three years. And he went okay. back and forth. Yeah. So it was I've, I've done some work with RTM, so we can we can chat on that yeah. if you want to explore it. Uh, Joel, Les, and I used to work together a fair amount. We still do occasionally. Uh, He's yeah, so nice. Yes. Yeah. That's, I worked with him at Rutgers back in the day. Oh, so forever ago cool. Now. And I saw uh, him speak at a Talia conference, and I didn't even know who he was back then. And now I'm, like, kicking myself. Like, yeah, <laughs> I should have, like, gotten to know you more so I can, yeah. So. Oh, no, they're great. So if there's any questions, uh, I can put you in contact with them. They're great with any of that. But, yeah, we can sort through some of that. Thanks, class.
Sweet. Well, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, Jennifer, thank you obviously for presenting everything with us. And if y'all have any feedback you want to give Grant, that will help me because I'm doing this to um, become certified, a certified law enforcement analyst, a CLIA. So any feedback, anything I can do better, worse, whatever. I love open constructive criticism. So. Cool. Any other last minute questions? Chat just blowing up with thank yous. Uh, but yeah. again, thank you for your time, especially a Thursday afternoon and everything with that. Uh, but All if right. nothing else, I'm sure Thanks, we'll, well, I'll probably be chatting with you in the next couple of weeks anyways with yep. everything else. I'll All talk right. to you too, Grant. All right. Take thanks, care, y'all. Bye.